Hi, Becky. How are you? It's uh, almost time for a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to call Steve, make sure he knows. Go ahead and do whatever. I'll get back to doing a puzzle. <laughs> okay. Oh, you got a puzzle right there? Oh, I have several puzzle books of different kinds. Oh, neat. Not, not jigsaw puzzles, just puzzle books. My mom always has a jigsaw puzzle going. Oh, good for her. Yeah. I don't, because knowing my luck, my cats would knock it off. I bet. <laughs> that would be challenging. Yes. I don't know, hon. Should I schedule 6.30? We should be done by then. Hi. Um He will be there, be here. Good, great. His wife wasn't sure because he didn't get any sleep last night. Oh, I sure he didn't, not with that weather. Yeah, that was and nasty. It, yeah. Lisa oh. wanted the tomorrow, I think, is coming in during the day. Be that it, bit good, bad, or indifferent. Well, it looks like it's going to keep going. Is it? All day. Ooh. When's it due to start, though? I haven't been able to figure it out. Some say, you know, after, you know, around noon. Others are saying earlier. You don't know what to believe. Yeah, mine says 5 a.m. Oh, yeah, but that would be just, according to uh, Channel 22, that's just a uh, little bit of uh, Flurry. flurries. Yeah, it's supposed to get serious by 9 or 10. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> just in time for me to go to work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and dear. It looks like it's going to go through like 5 p.m. Yike wonderful but who knows what kind of snow it is yeah right yeah that's the issue what kind of snow is it oh it doesn't make life fun doesn't it mm, challenging yes that's what i mean and i do feel sorry for the uh highway i mean they just spent all night out yeah hmm Yeah, it doesn't tell me uh, tomorrow. That's a temperature. No, I don't see an estimate on how much. I don't think they know. I don't, really don't think they know much about this storm. They keep saying they really don't. They can't <laughs> make a guess on anything. Really? Yeah, isn't that wonderful? That's odd. Well, they don't know where it's exactly where it's going. It doesn't seem to be carrying that much snow. Sounds but like, who like, knows? Yeah, because it's going to stay cold. So like that, yeah. when it's really been cold, we've been getting those dry little yeah. tiny flakes. Right, right. Which I think we ought to be thankful for in some respects. Oh, it's yeah. Easier to move. Oh, that one night where... It snowed all day, and when I went out to my car, it was like, <gasps> and it just went, whoosh, it just yep. flew off like no, it was just like I barely had to wave my hand, and it was gone. <laughs> Weren't you lucky? Yeah, I was <laughs> definitely. Oh dear. I spent so anything, anything more of interest happened today? No, because I was sucked into meetings all day long. Oh, that's I right. Negotiations after my other meeting ended. What, what union is negotiating? The police? Uh, the school. Oh. Oh, boy. Yeah. 
the school union to start. They just finished a one year contract and they're going to try to do a three year. I love your cow, mm. your mug. <laughs> it keeps the coffee really warm, too. Good. Oh, we got somebody coming in, Brad Foster. Nice. Who's Who is he? Library. Hi, Brad. Oh, okay. Library. Okay. You're a library trustee still, right, Brad? No, oh, he's, he's um, muted. muted. You're still a trustee at the library, right? I don't know that. Oh, oh, yeah. There he is. <laughs> there he is. I was, Alan was just asking who you were, and I told her you're a trustee at the library. That's right. I hadn't turned my volume on. I heard, I didn't hear you talking yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a lot of people don't do that. They keep it on and then it, they just happen to watch and all of a sudden they start talking and it's like, like yeah, you can't understand them because you they have no audio. Oh. So yeah. you always have to say, you put on your audio. I think we ought to develop a universal bunch of signs that for everything from mute to talk or something. <laughs> Or here, I, we've been known to do this to tell people to to turn on their turn on their audio. Somewhere in my stack of things, I, I do I call dances through Zoom. Uh, what country, kind of, country what country kind of squares, dances? Pardon? Dancing. Oh, and it's it's crazy square dancing. I'm doing. Oh, I love square, square dance. dancing. And I mean, I don't have eight people who are dancing, and the band is who knows where. So I have these signs. You know, one more time. I can't talk with the band. <laughs> right, right. It's That's crazy. interesting. One of the signs says, go out now. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had to use that one yet. <laughs> That's interesting. Very clever. Ah. Yeah, I hear singing in a choir is a real hard mm. thing to do on Zoom. Yeah. I, um... I run the 1794 Meeting House up in New Salem, and we have a chorus, and they just have not wanted to do the Zoom chorus. And I, I, yeah. it make, I don't want to do it either. Yeah. <laughs> it's too yeah. crazy. It is. It's, it's next, unless you're really, really, really a professional. I mean, yeah. some of these orchestras and all are, are able to, to do this, which amazes me, but they're Hi, professionals. Bye. Hi, Bob. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Marianne. You're muted, Marianne. I believe. You want to be muted? All right, now she isn't. Now Hello, she's in. Everyone. That's all I said. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So, how much we were trying to figure out how much snow we're going to get tomorrow. Um, Noah says four to six inches. Okay. So not, not a lot. Enough to make it hard to drive. Well, if it all comes down at once. Yeah. Yesterday we only got two inches. I, I know. Think, so know? much for the big, but although Kevin said he at his place in, uh, oh God, Menden, he had seven inches. Wow. And that's wow. on top of the like 14 he had with the last storm. Right. Because <laughs> right. he's in that area where they tend to get clobbered. Uh-huh. Well, we often get clobbered. Yeah. So I don't mind. I don't I, mind. I'm if, not a fan of the snow. Neither so. am I. <laughs> I also don't mind when the Cape gets a lot of it. Because I've got a lot of friends in the Cape that are forever teasing me about the amount of snow we get. Right. Right. I it's fun when we went up to shovel yesterday <laughs> afternoon there were kids sledding on that little hill by the um post office yeah they were there uh, today too there were some kids and doing that's it. just adorable you know it's, yeah um by the so. post office where the horse where blue used to live and the horse um if there was a horse there it was no no it was you many no. years ago many many years ago yeah you know, before my memory. So right there on the corner, mm -hmm. you know, um, so it was- but, but not going into the road. No, nobody was sledding into the road. Okay. That's so, good. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was we wondering how they were stop. doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. It looks like you 
got a quorum. One, two, three, yeah. So I'm missing Steve and Secretary's I'm- Terry's missing. Steve's yes. here. Yes, definitely. There he is. There's Michael Broad. Oh, good. Is there somebody else? Yes, uh, Steve Sullivan. He's here. He's here. I just He's saw here. him. There he is. <laughs> I'm not seeing him. Dancing. Okay. He's dancing. Is this an exercise class? I thought this was capital planning. So <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Penny. Good to see you, dear. See, well, it's a good day to come to a meeting. Well, <laughs> thank you for coming. It's always nice to see you. We don't get to see you, see much of any of us very often <laughs> now. So certain advantages to Zoom. Yes. I'm in the dark here. Oh. Yeah, I know that problem. Okay, it is now 5.30. Oh, uh, wait a minute, I've, I've got too many people so I have to keep switching screens. Uh, Michael? Oh, Michael Broad? Maybe he doesn't. He's there. Yes, I know. Do you have down in your records who's here from our committee? I will if everybody doesn't go anywhere. Okay, thank you. Incidentally, I thank you very much for re for sending out the uh, minutes. <laughs> and uh, no, I th I thought your little comment was very interesting. I've been I've been accused of that too. Sometimes as the secretary, <laughs> when I send things early, everybody complains. That's right. Well, <laughs> yeah. The problem is then I forget if I don't send them out early. So. <laughs> right, but I very much appreciate you you sending them. Okay. Review the agenda. So our agenda tonight is review the minutes, of course, and to discuss and vote on all capital requests. And uh, then any other actions reasonably, not reasonably ant uh, anticipated by the chair. So hopefully this won't be too long a meeting. Okay, then I call the meeting of the Capital Planning Committee to order. Uh, does anyone desire to uh, make any changes to the agenda of the in terms of the order in which things are or anything? Um, could I just ask that the police come last because I forgot to send the link to the chief. I'm just sending it now. Okay, sure. Well, I think they were scheduled, weren't they? I'm uh, here. I'm oh, here. You're here. Oh, Great, Dan. wow. Wow. He is very good at magically appearing places. <laughs> yes, I'm like, um, uh, yes, magic. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, but we have a lot of people here from the library, so maybe we'll do that first. But before we do anything, why don't we take things out of order and at least review and vote on the minutes so I don't forget. Did everybody get the, get the minutes? Of the, anybody, everybody of my committee get the minutes? Yes. Okay. And if you, assuming you have reviewed the minutes, do I have do I have a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the minutes as written. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Now the motion's been made and seconded to approve the minutes as written. Is there any discussion? No. Everybody found them satisfactory then. Could we have a vote, please? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, then the minutes will stand approved as written. And um, Michael, would you make please make sure the town clerk gets a copy of them? I shall do that. Yeah. Makes town clerk is very happy when they get minutes from us, from anyone. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Now, we had, last time when we were discussing the uh, requests for the, the annual requests, we had an annual request for $25,000 for the library. Uh, note that there could be a possible pilot grant available in two years. Oh, I know what, that is the grant for the funding, the SBAB grant, I assume. And, uh, 
we said we did not vote on that, but this is the first, our first appropriation. Do we want to recommend? And all we're doing is recommending to the finance committee. We as a committee do not say where the money's coming from or anything else. Our whole purpose is simply to simply to say yay or nay on the request. So do I have a motion on the request for the library for $25,000? I guess I can make a motion to uh, recommend uh, the an allocation of $25,000 to support the library building fund. That sound right? <laughs> Close enough. Okay. Uh, do, do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, so now the motion's been made and seconded then to honor the annual request for $25,000 for the library. Is there any discussion other than the discussion we held last month or two months ago? No. Bob's got his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a problem of having too many screens. I have to keep flipping back and forth. Where is Bob? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, there you are. Speak yeah, because I couldn't see you at all. I looked up at the top, and you weren't didn't seem to be in either panel. Okay, right. Bob. Well, okay, well, I, I just want to make a few remarks, if I may. Uh, of to, course. Particularly to the people in the committee who may not have been here when this, uh, some of the history of this uh, issue uh, developed in Shutesbury. Uh, first thing is, uh, every year I brought this issue up, and I still am puzzled by it. Why this is before this committee? since uh, I'm looking at the mandate for the Capital Planning Committee and I see some things which concern me or confuse me, I guess. One of them is that, uh, that this project, whatever is being proposed or requested from our committee should be something that's gonna be done during the ensuing six years. Now, if you just do a little simple math, this has been on uh, this committee's agenda for about, I'd say eight years already and then we don't know when or if a library will be built because we have not approved that as a town. Uh, we actually had a, a, a very uh, robust uh, d disagreement in the town as we most of us know, which resulted in uh, the library not achieving a simple majority of support when it came down to uh, uh, passing an election, an election by the way, which was participated in historic numbers in Shutesbury. Um, so, and then was followed by another election uh, and then by a series of court battles, the end of which was that the library, uh, although it was widely supported by, I would say approximately half of the, elect, the, uh, the, the voters here, it did not achieve a simple majority and it was a very divisive and uh, issue that has not really been resolved to my way of thinking in a way that would, we should go forward as a town to support. Uh, so that's that's one thing that I've tried to bring up in the past and I just wanna be sure that uh, others, newcomers who are not familiar with the history knew, that, knew these facts. Anyway, as far as this particular proposal this year, it's also confusing to me that it should be before capital planning and then go to finance committee and come out of the regular budget. Uh, I just never understood that process and how it how it makes sense. Uh, but as far as the, this proposal, I was against it every year it's come up because I felt it was undemocratic to support a so-called savings account, which for as far as I know, does not exist in any other town in the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. this kind of project. Uh, I do support a library in Shutesbury. I always have. I just am very concerned about gentrification and uh, affordability issues in the town. And I would like whatever is done in the town, whatever department that is being funded by the town to be in scale with what I think is uh, uh, considerate of, of longtime residents' ability to pay for it and also the quality of life in a small town, which I think is something I'm very interested in preserving here in Shutesbury. So I will not, uh, I just want to be sure that uh, the other members of the committee knew that slant on the, on the issue and uh, I, I will not be voting to support this request. Thank you, Bob. A couple of comments though. I don't think, you know, you, towards the end, you made a comment that seemed to imply that the uh, architectural rendering we dealt with the first time is what is going to be the second time. 
And I don't somehow don't think it is. I mean, I imagine it isn't. I may be wrong. And uh, Marianne can correct me if I'm wrong. But we don't know what it's going to look like. Second of all, several years ago, I brought up the fact that maybe this should not be coming to capital planning. And capital planning voted to keep it coming to capital planning. I mean, to me, it didn't make any sense either. But I, I respect the will of the, of the committee back then, and that's why we keep having it. And I think you made a m mistake because you said that something that comes to us can only last for six years. I don't believe that's accurate. Because uh, when we buy a grader or we buy a dump truck, they're going to last hopefully more than six years. No, I, I, you misunderstood what I said. I'm just reading from the description on the yeah. website, which says that uh, on forms prepared by uh, the departments concerning anticipated projects requiring town meeting action within the next six years. Yes, well, this is required probably because well, here, according to according to what is said here, uh, an SBAB grant will be available in two years. I just said that we've been doing this for over eight years. So okay, that's okay, thank you, thank okay. you. Okay, so we still does anyone else? Would anyone else like to speak? Uh, AJ, has his hand up. Yeah, I just a uh, couple, couple of quick points, just on on the sort of technical issue around um, the six years. I mean, I, I'm I'm reading the website too, and I think what's confusing is that what well, the previous sentence. Uh, on that description uh, specifies three um, criteria right. uh, that define which, what kinds of proposed projects and improvements are to be um, reviewed by the committee. And, um, and, and, and I think if you, if, you pay, if you focus on that sentence, this is, this is obviously clearly a project of the scope that is supposed to be reviewed by the committee. I think the next sentence has more to do with um, the capital plan document that gets mm -hmm. prepared and updated periodically. And the, yeah. and the capital plan, I think, has this six year um, um, sort of timeline to it. But, but anyway, I, I think that's a technical issue. I, I think, um, you know, the, the only, I, I totally hear what, what Bob says. I guess that, you know, the, my, my only, response is that, you know, obviously not a dollar of this fund is ever going to be spent on a project that doesn't get approved by the town, right? So the fact that it, that there was a previous effort to fund a library that, um, you know, did, did not capture the required vote does not mean that there won't be a future vote and and uh, and more importantly the fund is is only going to be spent unless I'm misunderstanding something here is only ever going to be spent on a project that is approved by the town so I, I don't think there's a sort of issue of this being um like un undemocratic in, in, in that sense so that's that's my my thought thank you AJ anyone else and I'm going to flip screens here I don't have all of you on the same screen. Mike Binsky has his hand raised. Oh, okay, Mike. I don't even see you, but anyway, go ahead. Sorry if I'm invisible. Um, oh no, but, there uh, you are. Now you're on. Thanks. Um, so I've, I've been I've been following um, what's been happening um, with the uh, with the finance committee over the last several months, and and I'm I'm sure um, Bob and AJ and Jim and, and Becky can attest to that. Um, and uh, also the, um, you've been following what's been, what's been going on with the, um, the regional school assessment method and everything. And it's just had a, um, a four town meeting on Saturday and, you know, Amherst has come in and said that they're, they're basically hurting financially this year. And, um, they have, they have set a limit for what they can, they can support, um, with the regional school. And um, it's, it, it's looking like it's gonna be about a million dollars worth of, of, of cuts in the, in the school budget. And the other, the other towns that were there, um, they, 
they didn't seem to, um, I don't want to say they didn't seem to have a problem with that, but they were um, basically saying that, yeah, times are hard for everybody. And if we have to, if we have to make reductions, we're going to have to make reductions. And it, it appeared to me that, that everyone was, was on board with understanding that. Um, so how does this relate to the, the 25,000 from the library this year? Well, it's, it comes back to the fact that we've got a lot of um, other expensive projects mm -hmm. coming up, the uh, culvert and the school roof. Um, we're also still in a financial uncertainty about the COVID situation. And, um, you know, we're looking at trying to uh, minimize expenses this year. And I would think that just postponing this uh, $25,000 um, budget request for one year would make sense this year since um, it is so uncertain what the financial situation is going to be and that it, it's well known that there's, um, there's financial issues going on everywhere. So I, um, I would hope that you would not um, support that this year and, uh, and hopefully not see that on the um, at town meeting. Thanks. Thank you, Mike, but I don't know if you're aware that the governor's budget has indicated that we will get the same amount of money that we got this past year. As a matter of fact, we will even get more because there's more school, going to be more money coming to the schools this year for next year for fiscal 22 than we got in fiscal 21. So actually mm -hmm. we're just as well off. We're not getting had, apparent, as I understand it, by by the COVID and all the other stuff, because the governor has guaranteed us the same amount of money. And uh, oh. I don't hear from legislators that they're about to cut it. Yes, Marianne, oh. I, I saw okay. Marianne's wow. hand. Well, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, I hear people's concerns about COVID and it's my job to represent the, the library needs in town. And, um, and so, you know, I work in a building, a very tiny building um, where I can't even wash my hands in the middle of a pandemic. And um, sanitation uh, is, is, you know, incredibly difficult to manage on my own um, in a building that doesn't have any water. Um, and this pandemic, while you know, while there is a possibility of things being better uh, in the future, um, it still means that it's going to be a long time. Right now, where I'm not allowing the public to come to come into the building because we have we had such a surge of cases. Cases have started to kind of trickle down, but now there are new variants of the virus and um, and a, a big upswing of cases in Amherst. Um, but in any case, our library is so small that while this pandemic is raging, and it's going to really be for quite some time, you know, when we do let people in, we, I was letting up to three people into the library, and that felt crowded and dangerous. And so we find ourselves in this really vulnerable place. And, and, you know, and, and I've been working really, really hard to provide the best services that one person can provide. And, and you know, and I, I think I've done a really good job. I get a lot of satisfaction out of doing my job. Um, and really, other than being out sick for 14 days, um, I haven't taken a day off since March. Well, being out sick for 14 days and then two days when I went to funerals for family members who died of COVID. Um, and, and I work so hard and so diligently and I, and I come to you and I represent, you know, the needs of the town because that's what people are asking me to do. And those same people show up at town meeting every year, you know, expecting to vote on this request and they support it. And those same people gave the Friends of the Library $15,000 in December um, 
And usually in our December fundraiser, they well, last year they gave us $9,000. The two years before that, it was $8,000. So, so not only does there continue to be clamor and demand and, and uh, you know, an undeniable need for an improved library facility in Shutesbury, but to me, it seems like there's more support and more demand and people do not want to, and, and they recognize that, you know, that our town doesn't have sort of any kind of social infrastructure to, um, to make the town a resilient place. So, um, so I, 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 I understand that people are concerned about money. I, uh, you know, I, um, but then I've seen the governor's budget and the state revenues, and I see that, you know, we're not really looking at <laughs> reductions in that way. And, um, and, and this, you know, and, and, and the library is about Shootsbury and it's not about, and it's about everyone in Shootsbury who chooses to participate in the library. And it's not about taking away from the schools or taking away from a culvert. It's, this is a need that we've been talking about since 1995 in Shootsbury. And this will be our third attempt. And at one of the complaints in the last attempt was that we didn't save ahead of time. And so, and we had been saving. The, this, the town has been appropriating money since 2007 for a new library project. Um, and, and we started appropriating that money in 2007 because a neighboring town had been doing the very same thing. So Bob just said that other towns don't do this, but somebody who is, you know, one of our contiguous neighbors um, did it before us and, and set the example. So that's, that's it. You've all heard from me over and over again. Running the library is harder than ever, more rewarding than ever. I'm not complaining about running the library. I love running the library and I feel privileged to be of service to our community in this way during this really challenging time. But the people of Shutesbury need a much better library facility. Penny? Well, I represent a certain demographic. Um, Long-term resident, oh my gosh, you know, 56 mm -hmm. years or something. This issue has been a great incentive for me to live longer because I, I have got to see a library in Shootsbury and I intend to live even beyond its, its uh, arrival because I want to enjoy it. But I do find, especially as I've aged, I found it is just an amazing resource uh, and it is a source of communal life. And I think that's even more important as we age, certainly for younger children in town and their parents, but uh, I have found it a really uh, necessary part of the whole scenery. And I've always supported putting it in the budget because as Marianne says, we were encouraged to save. And I see that it makes sense to have built this fund so that when the time comes to draw on it, there'll be less of an impact on the budget that year. So I think it's prudent and necessary and um, I want to enjoy it. <laughs> Penny, we certainly hope you're around for many, 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 many years after this library well, gets built. Um, <laughs> as I toddle up there, yeah. Okay. Well, we're very glad that you are toddling up there even now. And, th and thank, thank you, you for, for speaking. Okay, now, is there anyone else? Okay, then can we... Can we take a vote? Uh, no, I'd like to say something if I may, Ellen, please. Uh, just the, to, I'm sorry, Bob. I don't know who's speaking. Bob. Uh, Bob, okay. Yeah, first of all, uh, this is not about the library because there is no proposal for the library before us and we're not here to vote about that. This is about the $25,000 request made by the library for a building fund. That's what I was trying to talk about. I gave a little historical background, uh, but I don't want to get into a debate about the library plus or minus. Uh, because there is no proposal in front of us, as you've said, we've, as we all know, to debate. So when there's a proposal, proposal I would be very happy to, to look at it and, and evaluate it, uh, but I don't want to fund a, a pig and a poke. So that's my point, okay? 
That's what we're doing here. Thank you, Bob. Is, is there anyone else? Okay, then. Uh, of the committee members, and I think I now have all of you, everybody on the one screen, which makes it much easier for me. All those in favor of the annual request for to, to place the annual request of $25,000 to vote in the, in the affirmative, which would then take it to the Finance Committee to find the funding, please raise your hand. One, two, three. Okay, all those opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. The $25,000 will be presented to the Finance Committee to determine the source of the funding. The next request. Um, let me ask thank you, Ellen. Yeah, okay. thank, thank, thank you, Mary you, Ann, and all your and all your all your com committee members. Okay, right. Steve, I want to get Steve. Steve, I know you didn't get much sleep last night. Uh, you're you're muted. You're muted. Zero. Okay, I wanted I wanted to ask you: Do you want to take the school piece next, so that maybe if you get tired, you can go take a nap? No, we're not. We're still not. Bruce is still doing some more work on that. We're not quite ready yet. For what? The school? Yes. The school slider? Oh, okay. So we're not going to be able to consider that then this year. Or we're going to have another meeting. I vote for okay. another meeting. Okay, then we can have it. Do you have any idea when whoever? Oh, Bruce. I know who Bruce is. Yes, do you have any idea when he'll have some information for us? I think he will have it for Thursday. He got one piece of information, but it wasn't for the installation. He was also sourcing um, a different type of window, which he got quoted, but now, um, but he didn't have that piece of how to install the Marvin windows. That was the original yeah. um, funded, I mean, supported piece. Okay, so then we're going to have to plan for another meeting to handle that one. Okay, now we had the, Police uh, request for a new cruiser estimate for the Ford Explorer, $47,062. And I know the chief is here on the phone. And as you all have probably seen in the paper, if you didn't already know, uh, Chief Fernandez has resigned effective the beginning of March to pursue other avenues in his career. And, uh, but Dan, I know you wanted to speak on this issue tonight. So please take it away. And you are muted right now. Yes, uh, thank you, Ellen. Um, I do want to speak on this a little bit uh, tonight. Um, you know, we've had this conversation before, I think, to a certain degree as to what, you know, the purpose and, and reasoning behind getting a new cruiser this year. Um, the issue that we're going to run into in the future here, and, and by future, I mean within the next year, uh, is that we have two cruisers that are uh, 2015 and 2016, uh, one being the Ford Taurus, which I drive, which is 2015, and one being the 2016 Ford Explorer. Both of these vehicles are kind of eclipsing around the same number of miles um, and at the same time. Uh, the issue with that being is that these, both of these vehicles are going to be, uh, before replaced, are going to be in excess of 125 thousand miles um and that would be just my car if we waited a whole a whole year uh, i'm at about ninety thousand miles of my car and i think the average is around 25 to thirty thousand miles a year on a cruiser um the issue is that not necessarily mine as much but the 2016 explorer will be upwards of 145 thousand miles 250,000 miles by the next two years, or if it's scheduled the way it is, I think it would be actually three years from, uh, I think it'd be four years from now. Um, Becky could, might be able to kind of confirm that or not, Becky. I think we, yeah, I think, so, um, I think we looked two, at the schedule or the tentative schedule for the replacement. The 2016 on the schedule is 2020. Five and the 2015 is 2023. Right. So we're, I mean, that, that 2016 is going to have well over 150,000 miles on it by then. And the issue that we're going to run into is we're going to be basically throwing, you know, uh, what I believe is going to be excessive funds at a vehicle that won't be worth anything in the end. Um, you know, these cruisers are far different than a, you know, $175,000 plow truck. Um, because that's a vehicle that can, you know, 
you could put money into and it'll still be worth something at the end of the day. Um, you know, just making these vehicles safe for the officers every year is, you know, is expensive. And if you have vehicles that have over 150,000 miles on them going over, you know, Pratt Corner Road and, and Cooleyville Road and Wendell Road, um, which are maintained to the best abilities of the highway department, they are very smooth, but they are still bumpy. Um, and they really do take a beating on the cars. Um, so that's, you know, the real reason we kind of need to get ahead of that. And, you know, if we can replace the 2015 this year and then also um, and then next, you know, within the next uh, two and a half or three years, replace that 15 or the 16, excuse me, I think we're going to be in better shape. I must remind the committee that the reason we ended up with a 15 and a 16 is we had to replace one that we didn't anticipate because frankly, it died. And as a result, we had no choice but to have back-to-back -back replacements of vehicles, which is something we have always tried not to do. But as I understand the history, that's what we had to do in order to keep our fleet on the, on the road at all. Okay, so uh, do I have a motion pertaining to this? We need a motion in order to discuss it. Do I have a motion on the floor for any, from anyone? No? Make a motion that uh, we uh, approve or consider the uh, request for funds for a new cruiser. Do I have a second? Steve seconding it, he's, he's muted. Okay, so now we have a motion and a second. So is there any discussion on the matter except for what Dan just gave us? Yes, Bob. Uh, I've done a little uh, homework on this one and uh, I've got a couple of comments. One of them is that the schedule as uh, just described by Dan and by Becky is that the car should be replaced by 23, uh, during the 23, uh, 2023. Number two, I did call ESP Auto, which I understand does the, uh, all the maintenance on the cruisers in town uh, and talked to the mechanic there and said he didn't see, he see the cars in good shape. Uh, it probably, he wanted to see it more often for, for regular maintenance, but he felt that it was a good shape according to the records that he had and his own observations. Uh, number three, the condition of the car seems good to me, but that's only my eyeball of it. Uh, number four, um, you know, I don't, I don't personally find it compelling to uh, uh, sort of buy another car because it's too close to the second car. I just think if the car's in good condition and it's safe, uh, then we run it. And, uh, you know, I don't think we've ever had a car that was worth a hell of a lot when it was, when we were done with it. But uh, I just don't see the point, particularly now, uh, this year, when we're trying to be careful with money, more careful than usual, uh, going out and purchasing a $50,000 car. So uh, despite the fact that it would be an improvement, uh, I, I just wonder whether this is a, this is a good move uh, for this fiscal year. And so, uh, I question whether it's it, it's something we should support. Bob, uh, when's when's the last time that mechanic at uh, ESP saw the vehicle? I don't know. I just talked to him on the phone after after you uh, presented to us. That's all. Right. Yeah, he hasn't seen the vehicle in a year. Um, at the bare minimum, he hasn't seen it in a year uh, because I have been outsourcing a couple different options uh, in order to repair vehicles. Uh, that are more efficient for the town and more efficient for the police department. So they haven't seen the vehicle in quite some time or any other vehicles in the fleet. Um, I believe your second question or concern would be, you know, if it's running and it's safe, it's okay. Um, you know, and that's, that is well and good. But I think part of the issue that we're going to run into is we are going to overdraw on the repair, repair of vehicles in the cruiser maintenance fund in the future. Um, now, if that's something that the, you know, that capital planning is okay with and FinCom is okay with overdrawing that account, then, uh, you know, I don't have an issue and maybe nor should the next chief. But I think that the, the responsible thing to do is to continue to purchase new vehicles. Most police departments in Western Mass and Massachusetts and around the country at 90,000 miles, they're replacing a vehicle. There is no question about it. They replace it every time at 90,000 miles. And if you buy a used vehicle from, say, UMass or any other place that has a big fleet of vehicles, 
they have 90,000 miles on them. Very rarely do they have anything more than that on them, unless they're a specialty vehicle, such as like a canine car that has an extravagant amount of money put into it and is only used by one officer um, at a time. So, you know, I, I would say, and I could almost say, well, yeah, okay, if the chief's vehicle is being used by only the chief, yes, I think that vehicle has a better chance of lasting longer. But, you know, multiple operators in a vehicle is something that is not good for them. I think that, um, you know, Steve might be able to kind of, um, you know, notice that for the highway garage that, you know, multiple operators in a piece of equipment is the same thing. I, I'm just concerned that, you know, if you do kick the can down the road on a subject like this, I think it is going to end up costing the town more in the end than it would um, getting ahead of it. Uh, Dan, may I just, just, uh, just on the ESP auto thing, um, uh, I, I'm sorry if I missed out on, on who's doing the maintenance and that would have might've confused me, but when you made the presentation to us, the documents you provided us with were ESP auto documents. So that's my conclusion was that, that oh, they no. were doing the service. Were they not? Yeah, no, absolutely. And they, uh, they have done the services. Um, the other documents that I would. Lost them. Hi, Dan. Hello. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So no, the, um, the other they, they did do a significant amount and have done a significant amount of repairs on our vehicles over the years. Um, but we do have other vendors that we have been using along with, um, you know, different vendors for our tires and trying to find better pricing um, throughout um, in order to get better pricing on repairs. You go to a, you know, there's, there's ways to get um, better pricing by going to a place that can do everything. Um you know, with the state bids that are included on the tires of our vehicles, which are one of the things that we replace most often. Uh, again, I'm just, you know, I am concerned about, you know, kicking the can down the road and, you know, I'm sure, sure everybody can sit here and say, yeah, well, he's only here for another month, but I just think it's kind of important for me to kind of stress the importance of, of doing this. Um, if I didn't think it was important, I wouldn't be here in this meeting. So, Thank you, Dan. Okay, does anyone else have any comments of the on the committee, please? Yes, AJ. You're muted. Sorry about that. Um, so I think I'm a little conflicted on on this request, and and I and I some of that has to do with I do think it's uh, it might be appropriate to. Uh, sort of hear the perspective of our, you know, next future chief that's going to live with this vehicle and be, be responsible for it and managing it. And so, you know, I'm sort of kind of grappling with um, the issue of, you know, whether, like, I totally appreciate that um, the chief is, like, he, at this point, he has no dog in this fight. It's not, you know, it's not going to be so, but that he's advocating for what he thinks is best for the department. And so I, I totally respect that and hear it. Um, but I think, you know, given that there is a schedule that we're essentially deviating from here um, by purchasing a new vehicle in FY22 versus FY23, I'm not, I guess I'm, I'm not sure that, um, that, that it makes sense to, to approve this request at this point right now, and especially given that the future chief who's gonna be responsible for managing this along with the rest of the fleet is, you know, is not on board and is, we're not gonna have an opportunity to get that, that input. So I, I think that's kind of where my head is at on, on this issue. Thank you, AJ. Uh, Becky, can you explain to the committee perhaps where this thing that said, well, it should be 23 came from where the whole, how this whole thing is developed because it's not set in stone that a given thing is going to be gotten on a given year. But Becky, yeah, could you um, get, yeah, the, the explain that? Capital improvement plan is an estimate of where, when costs will drop in um, given on the history that we're familiar with 
uh, usually when vehicles are about five years old, five going on sometimes to six, um, they start developing major problems and we're trying to get out in front of that. Um, I, you know, so it's, it's, it's a ballpark timing if, and it's, and I think Dan has um, pointed out a problem that because we did have this cluster of vehicles, you know, we purchased three vehicles in four years. Typically that can go over six to seven or eight years, most typically. So by buying them all at once, it's been a, a different experience and he's pretty much encouraging us to spread it back out so that it, the repairs are not dominated by the whole fleet at one time. Um, and usually like you get a $5,000 repair job um, on it's, you know, the vehicle often is near the end of its life. So I just wanted to look and see where the next estimate, it's not right here. So it's, it's, it's not written in stone, um, but it's, it's, which we're, we're trying, it's for planning purposes to make sure that the town is aware that, you know, costs will keep coming cruisers in particular um going up have a shorter lifetime and they, they also keep going up price. the costs and this year we're seeing a ten thousand dollar increase in price but we got in on the tail end uh, with the last three vehicles the one thing about them being closer together is we were trying to purchase them before the costs really did take off which they have done thank you and uh I lost something. Oh, we don't even know, of course, when we are going to get a new chief yeah. because we may be operating with a, what is it called? A officer in charge for a substantial length of time if we have to if we go out and do a search. The select board hasn't yet decided which, if you sat in on the meeting the other night, last week, uh, they haven't decided yet which tack they're going to take on filling Chief Fernandez's position. So it may be a, a while before we get a chief. It isn't going to be somebody that comes on immediately, I would suspect, because just the whole process of trying to find a chief is going to take some time. Anyway, is there anything else? Yes, Alan, can I respond yes. to AJ? AJ, I, yeah. I completely understand what you're saying, and I, and I, you know, I completely get it. Um, you know, I think what Alan says is correct. Um, obviously this capital expenditure would have to go on Springtown meeting if I am yeah, not mistaken. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's the case, but I would assume. Um, and I think that's end of April, something like that. So the odds of us having a new chief in are, are probably not going to happen. So we'd have to go to fall town meeting. Um, <laughs> at that point, you'd probably be looking at, you'd also be looking at, I think they said a three to 4% increase in cost. If you went with a, at that point, it would probably be a 20 22 model uh, vehicle so there's an increase in cost there um, and also you know an increase in in mileage uh, you know so I, I certainly understand the concern I just I do think that um, it would be in the best interest of the town uh, you know and and for the safety of the officers that you know will still certainly be here long after I'm gone uh, to you know get a newer vehicle for them um, you know, and also I think, you know, I think every year I've been, you know, knocking on the, the door of overspending in the uh, cruiser maintenance category, which I think is at like $5,400 uh, for the year. And that's to cover uh, four cruisers. Um, I would say you could almost call it three and a half because one of them is just a detail car. It's not used for active patrol. So that car gets a little less upkeep. But the, you know, concern is, is that, you know, you lose a transmission, you lose a rear end or, you know, start getting into bigger components when they get to a higher mileage and, and just a higher wear time. Thank, thank you, Dan. I just did a little calculation. I'm sitting here with my adding machine. Uh, the 3% increase will, will increase the cost of the machine by about $1,500. 
And you said uh, you commented that what what if we you run over in your in your budget? Well, that means you would have to go to the finance committee reserve fund in order to fund it. You can't just somehow get it from some or just just go over because I'll tell you, Gail does not like us going over our budgets. Those of us that run budgets with her. And so you would have to go to the, or you or your representative, let's say, would have to go to the uh, finance reserve fund. I don't even know how much they appropriated this past year for that. But anyway, uh, what was I, else was I going to say? Oh, and when you were talking about going to fall town meeting, I thought, well, I hope that if it goes to fall town meeting, it is determined that's going to be taken from free cash. Because if you start playing, uh, well, we're going to take it from appropriation and then we have to do the tax rate really, really, really late. Speaking as the collector, it presents a big, big, big problem for me. So, uh, you know, I really like getting the, out the bills the second or third week in December. I don't look forward to doing it the week between Christmas and New Year's. And I have had to do it on occasion, not because of a, a town meeting, but because of lateness in, in getting the budget done. Or I'm sorry, the, um, well, the whole setting of the tax rate done. So uh, I really, that would probably mean coming out of free cash, I would hope, if we go to fall town meeting with this issue. Therefore, I would rather like it done in the spring so that we don't, once again, we're just saying yay or nay, and it's up to the finance committee to figure out how to fund it. So if there's no other discussion, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I, I'd just like to, to add and kind of reiterate what, what AJ said. I think it is important that um, that this decision not be made uh, while we're in flux as far as um, what our police force is going to look like. And I, I don't think um, that uh, you can just assume that that it's going to be either a, a new chief or or um, an interim chief or something. I, I think at the discussion um, at the select board last week about policing, um, there's quite a bit of input about thinking outside the box and looking at other, other avenues uh, for policing and shoot So um, who knows what the structure of the police department could look like um, in the next uh, six or eight months or anything. Um, also, I'd like to, to echo what, what Bob said that the vehicle vehicle in question is in, in good shape right now. And I understand the concern about having two of them so close together, but it doesn't make sense to me that you're going to get rid of a car that's in, in good shape uh, just because it's too close to, to the age of, of another one. And, and Dan, I, you know, I don't take this personally or anything like that, but, but one thing that, that does bother me about um, the, um, the Crown Vic still being in the inventory is that in 2019, we were told, the town was told that the Crown Vic needed to go. It was a dangerous car. It was a liability to the, to the officers driving it. And it was costing a lot of money to keep it on the road. And yet we bought a new car and a Crown Vic is still in the inventory. And I just don't think that was an upright way to go about um, keeping that car. And, and that, really, that really bothers me. And I, I'm a little skeptical about uh, Dan, what you're asking for now. So uh, again, don't take it personally, but um, I just do have this uh, this feeling that 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 this is not uh, in the up and up. Okay, uh, Michael, I, I I certainly won't take anything personal um, that somebody says to me in my professional capacity. What I will take is that you're questioning my allocation of resources, I guess, for the police department which is certainly within my purview as a strong chief. But what I will say is this, the Crown Vic is still in the roster and in the fleet um, as a non-line car. So yes, the vehicle is not safe for an active patrol vehicle, but it certainly is safe to sit on road details and idle all day rather than putting those idle hours on our newer vehicles and adding more hours to their clock. Um, you know, the purpose of keeping that car is because the town and an admin fee, and Becky can certainly confirm what that fee ends up being for the town, but I believe it's $20 an hour, Becky, if I'm not mistaken, to for a detail, comp for a company to get the cruiser, I believe it's $20 an hour. 
um, additional to the um, to the hourly rate of the officer. I could be I wrong. I, I, yeah, I thought it was uh, ten. I, I have to check the last contract and see. If yeah, it maybe ten, 10 or twenty. Um, so, uh, um, I it maybe ten or twenty. So I can promise you, Michael, by telling you this right now any expenses or cost of repairs to the crown Vic have been paid for multiple times over by just the ability for the town to bill for that cruiser. Whereas you're leaving out the 2018 and the 2016 and 2015 vehicles and allowing a 2011 vehicle to continue to make the town actual money off of details. Um, this is something that is done widely across the board. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can say this for, for it to seem as some sort of backdoor way to keep a vehicle as if I have, uh, you know, some need to have a bunch of vehicles is kind of odd for me to hear, but it's there to keep the hours off of the newer vehicles and allow them to last longer, uh, because we don't need a vehicle that is a 2019 or 2020 or whatever they may be to go sit there and idle all day when a Crown Vic can do that just fine because it has heat. Well, that was, that was never brought up at town meeting and it should have been. Okay, and I, and I, I, certainly, I certainly don't have obviously control over what happens at town meeting, um, but I guess, I mean, what, so I guess Mike, what would your, what would your plan be with the Crown Vic if you were to have control over what would happen? Well, it's just, it's not what my plan would be. It's just the, the transparency of, of how you're asking for things. I, and I, I really don't want to bring this up either, but when I was on the select board, I was on the emergency management team and the, and the discussion about the police boat uh, took place. And it was determined that the police boat needed to be um, eliminated, that it was, uh, it was a money pit. It wasn't serving any person, purpose. And uh, the vote was to, to um, get rid of it. And now um, the police boat is in the inventory also. Uh, so I, it, just, it just seems to me there's a lot of things that are, um, are, are going one way and then all of a sudden they're going another way. And I don't think that's transparent. And I, I think okay. that's a, okay. that's a problem. Okay, gentlemen, please. I've got two hands, all kinds, of, all kinds of hands waving. And Steve was the first one. And please mute, unmute yourself, Steve. I have a question on the agenda. Does it have anywhere that it says that we're, we're accepting public comment? And I understood that this meeting no. was just for members of the capital planning and that the library, they brought representatives. And I don't understand why Mr. Vinsky is able to speak up at this meeting. Okay, I see nothing on the agenda that indicates that it's open to the, that the public can speak. Um, Becky, you had something. You were waving your hand too. Um, I just wanted to note one thing. Um, Dan became chief six months, eight months after the annual town meeting where the cruiser was purchased, uh, was voted for. He was left the responsibility of sourcing and finding the new cruiser. But he was not, you know, so he was not the presenter at annual town meeting. And I'm, I think due to the accident that our police chief had, I don't think um, Tom may not have been there either. I'm not certain. But I just wanted to clarify, this chief did not purchase that vehicle. So um, whatever was discussed there, he could not um, give more information about. Uh, and the last thing is that I think this, um, the Crown Vic has um, now has been parked for quite a while, um, which I talked, Dan, you can straighten me out. I understand it has to be moved before it can get fixed. And it's not a top priority because I don't, I think the repair isn't very expensive, but it'll be a trick to get it anywhere. So the main reason the plan was for the cruiser to be um, auctioned off like the prior vehicle. But when we started exploring that, we, we were just beginning the crush of details required by the new fiber network. And for that reason, um, 
you know, the decision was made to keep that vehicle on to have it available for people doing um, patrols because some of them were on Route 202. Um, they, the state police require uh, lights when you're doing uh, a detail down there. And we didn't want any safety issues and we didn't want um, anybody injured um, during that project. So those were ex you know, extraordinary circumstance that um, have, Dan has been resourceful in finding the least uh, expensive ways to keep the vehicle going. And uh, we've made very good use of it for this, per you know, for purposes that weren't known at the time of annual town meeting by the prior chief. Thank you, Becky. Uh, Michael, once again, you are not part of the committee and there's nothing that allows you to speak during this meeting. If you look at the agenda. Now, if you would like to say something very short, I will allow it. I appreciate that. And I just want to, um, the way I understand open media law is if someone at the meeting is recognized by the chair, they're allowed to speak. And I appreciate you recognizing me, Ellen. And that's, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Okay, now, therefore, no, I would thought maybe AJ was waving his hand, but I think he's just kind of figuring his, his, <laughs> his uh, chin or something. Okay, <laughs> Michael, did you want to say something? No, you're just being funny too, <laughs> Keep it, keeping it light. Okay, we have, a, we have a motion and a second before the committee then to approve, to recommend to the um, finance committee the purchase of the police cruiser. All those in favor, please raise your, raise your hand. All those opposed? Okay, the, the motion has not been carried. Okay. Can I just, so say, then, can, can I just say one thing? Uh, just to the ahead, chief, I, I, again, I totally respect that you, <laughs> join this meeting to advocate for, you know, what you, what you're, um, what you believe that, that is the, in the best interest of the department. So thank you for coming and, and sharing that, that point of view tonight. Thank you. No, I, and I, I appreciate everybody's input. And again, I mean, uh, you know, I'm a taxpayer in my town as well, um, in town of Wolverham. And I, you know, I understand how everybody has concerns. Um, but I, you know, again, I just believe it's my, my job still um, until March 6th um, to advocate what I think is best for the department. Um, so, but I do appreciate all the time and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Chief. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Now I believe we're going to have to set a new, another meeting to deal with the issue with the school slider. Um, and Becky, you seem to think it could be done the information could be obtained fairly quickly. Yeah, I think he's, he said he was going to try to get it back to me by Thursday. Okay. So what is convenient for all of you gentlemen? And I'm Becky. pretty much wide open. Uh, I, this is Monday nights are good for me. Uh, 530 is a good time for me. Steve says fingers up. Oh, snow, snow permitting. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, AJ. Um, I, 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 if we could avoid um, a week from today, um, if we're talking Mondays, that would be um, that would be better for me. I, I just have a conflict on. Uh, and it's also uh, a holiday. And it's a holiday. Yes, yeah. it's a holiday. <laughs> right. So that doesn't so the wouldn't work anyway. Twenty second. Twenty second. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, as long as it's the same okay. time. I've got something at eight, but. If we do, if we're doing five thirty or six, that's fine. Yeah. Mike. Oh, yeah. We have to. If we're going to have it on the twenty second, it has to be early because I've got another one at seven. Uh, we, you run a quick, you run an efficient meeting, Ellen. Thank you. I try. I have my gavel. That helps. <laughs> but if we did five thirty again, we should be. Yeah, I was going to say it, it's only the one article, right? Yeah, there. it's only yeah. the one article. Five thirty on the twenty second. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, then we'll try it for 5.30 and 22nd. And as I say, yeah. let's make it 5.30, we can get done by 6 o'clock and I can get supper before my meeting at 7. That's right. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Okay. And, and good and to see all of you. And 
I had I was I was talking to a taxpayer today who said in his home country, which is Venezuela, they have a they have a tradition that the first time you talk to anyone during the at at the uh, beginning of a new year, you always wish them a happy new year, no matter what the date. So happy new year to those gentlemen that I haven't seen since December. Same to you. Same to you. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Uh, I have to clear the meeting closed. Good night. Thank you. Good everybody. night. Just in time.